This scene is not about poker, it's just pure fantasy. It's so over the top, it makes Star Wars look like a documentary. And yet, here we are, watching four hands go down that would make Garrett Edelstein question all of his life choices before jumping out a window. Ladies and gentlemen, let's dive deep into one of the most absurd poker moments in cinematic history where James Bond doesn't just save the day, he pulls off the most unrealistic poker miracle since the invention of CGI. This scene is so ridiculous, it's like they filmed it based on a how not to play poker guide where actual poker logic is left bleeding in the alleyway outside. Now where do we even begin? All right. Let's kick things off on the turn because who needs to worry about the boring pre-flop and flop action in the most important hand of the 21st century. Let's set the scene. Four players are left in the tournament and not a single one has folded. That's right, four people playing poker in the tens of millions range are sitting there on the turn like it's an after school Uno game. At this point, I'm already reaching for the remote to double check I'm not watching a Magic the Gathering tournament. But alright, maybe you think I'm a bit too harsh. Let's get into these hands. The turn is the four of spades which gives Fukutu the second nut flush, Infante a set of eights, Le Chief, two pair and James Bond has already hit his straight flush. And to my complete disbelief, with a pot of 24 million dollars, they all check the turn check, check, check. like it's no big deal even though the worst hand on the board is two pair. Felix walks up to the table at this point with a look of disbelief, wondering if his decision to not rebuy was really a smart move. I'm bleeding chips. I'm not gonna last much longer. You have a better chance, I'll stake you. The river is the ace of spades and every single draw in the world hits. And as you know, Bond checks, Fukutu goes all in, Infante goes all in, Le Chief raises, Bond goes all in and Le Chief goes all in too. First off, who decided the script needed four players to go all in on the river with insane hands? As the cards are revealed, we have got the nut flush, eights full, aces full and bond straight flush which emerges as the poker equivalent of a mic drop. You know the odds of seeing a straight flush? It's 72,000 to 1. Now multiply that by the odds of each guy having a huge hand. The possibility of all these monster hands being dealt simultaneously are about 18 trillion to 1. The odds of this happening are so low, you are more likely to get struck by lightning while winning the lottery and becoming president all on the same day. And yet, here we are watching four hands go down that would make Garrett Edelstein question all of his life choices before jumping out a window. Le Chief's full house impressive in its own right, suddenly seems as effective as bringing a knife to a gunfight. The audience's reaction is a mix of awe and relief, not just because Bond has won, but because they no longer have to endure the unsettling sight of Le Chief's bleeding eye, a horror movie subplot that nobody signed up for. Meanwhile, the actual poker community is at home left wondering, who wrote this? So let's wrap up this dumpster fire with a few closing thoughts. Let's talk about James Bond here, strutting around like he's a poker god because he lands the one hand that everyone dreams of, a straight flush by pure, unfiltered, dumb luck. He does not execute some brilliant maneuver, there is no legendary read. He just sat there, smiled and let the dealer gift wrap him a win. Which for anyone who does not know poker is like winning the lottery because your horoscope said today's your lucky day. And the worst part? After he wins. Bond just walks away like it's another casual Tuesday. Honestly, this man's lack of emotions is so terrifying, he makes Patrick Antonius look like a smiling clown. Let's talk about Le Chief for a moment. Here's a guy who set up an entire poker tournament with a group of high rollers fully expecting to dominate. And what does he do? He plays the game like everyone else. Not one hidden card, no sleight of hand, nothing up his sleeve, just his oversized ego and his apparently staggering misplaced confidence in his poker genius. It's like he strolled into this game convinced he was untouchable despite having the same odds as everyone else. Le Chief is supposed to be a poker prodigy and yet here he is seeing the board, seeing three other players go all in and he decides to shove all in for the biggest part of his life with a full house which by the way is not even the nut full house. The most bizarre moment in this poker scene happens right at the end of the game. Before James Bond struts off, he decides to tip the dealer with a half a million dollar chip. The dealer 
casually grabs it, saying thank you as if it were a normal cash game. Here's the thing though, this is a tournament. Those chips aren't worth a dime, they are just tokens for the game. So what does Bond think he's doing? Either he's completely clueless about poker chips or he's trolling the dealer after a 12 hour shift. So here's the real takeaway, if you are looking to learn poker from James Bond, forget it. This scene is not about poker, it's just pure fantasy. It's so over the top, it makes Star Wars look like a documentary. The cards, the drama, the perfect timing, it's all carefully engineered for the Hollywood climax, logic be damned. And as much as we can laugh about it, part of us loves it too. Because deep down, we all want that moment where the villain loses, the hero wins and everyone cheers. It's the ultimate poker scene that has nothing to do with poker. But let's be real, if you are ever in a game and see hands like this, the only winning move is to pack up your chips and run before someone pulls out the magic deck of cards again.